Today, myself, Rick Bullamere, and leading battery electrochemist Dr. Ewan McTurk are driving the Hyundai Ioniq 5 and the Kia EV6. The Kia EV6 starts at £41,695 in the UK and €50,000 in Ireland. It's only available with a 77.4 kilowatt hour battery at the moment, but that propels you to between 225 and 250 miles on a charge. It's got an 11 kilowatt onboard charger, but it can charge at over 220 kilowatts on CCS. The Hyundai Ioniq 5 starts at £39,400 in the UK or €38,995 in Ireland. It has a smaller battery variant available at 58 kilowatt hours, but it also has the 77.4 kilowatt hour battery available in the EV6. The onboard charger is the same at 11 kilowatts, but the car will charge at 175 kilowatts for the small battery variant or 220 kilowatts for the big battery variant on CCS. The range of the smaller battery is about 185 miles or 300 ish kilometers per charge. We wanted to show you some of the amazing tech inside the Ionic 5, but realised that the exterior tends to divide opinion. So with an alternatively styled option in tow, we headed to the largest wind farm in the UK to show you a little something called vehicle to load. So first impressions getting into the car, incredibly well built. Oh, this feels good. The steering wheel has a fantastic texture to it and is incredibly well weighted. This feels really good. Now I'm in the Hyundai Ionic 5, which is very, 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 very similar to the car behind us, which is the Kia EV6. But this is a lot more futuristic inside and outside. And it's, you know, it's something like if someone was trying to design a car of the future, that's what this would be. But in terms of how you get it going, there's a little start stop button on the left of the steering wheel, and then your gear selector is on what looks like an indicator stock, similar to what Tesla does. So twist it up and away from you, put it in the drive, and away we go. Now we're just coming onto a dual carriage. Oh my goodness, sorry, I'm just totally <laughs> throwing our cameraman back in his seat there. Sorry, Callum. So yeah, uh, as you just saw there, the throttle is pretty bunchy. Uh, what I've noticed actually is that, I mean, this is a car that has oodles of power, <laughs> up to 167 kilowatts, depending on the battery size. I'm sure Ewan is probably explaining all the kilowatts and the tech and the battery size and why the car works and how the car works, but it's got autopilot. You can pretty much take your hands off. You shouldn't take your hands off the steering wheel, but you could if you wanted to. It's handling the corner beautifully. I'm gonna have, keep my hands here just for safety reasons. Uh, there we go, keep hands on the steering wheel, just in case you doze off. So if you take your hands off for too long, it will warn, it will gyrate, it will vibrate, and uh, encourage you to put your hands back on the steering wheel. But it's very useful to have this function in the car um, if you need to go and access the, uh, the navigation or um, not use your phone, because that's very naughty on the road. In fact, it's not just naughty, it's illegal. So in terms of safety features, this car is specced to the teeth. You've got lane keep assist, you've got uh, rear cross traffic collision avoidance, you've got even things like rear passenger occupancy sensors and so on. There is quite an exhaustive list of features on this car, some of which have already made their presence known during the day, including the likes of the lane keep assist. The heads up display now has the speed limit and it also has the number of yards before the junction and the direction that you should be turning in. So it's a very handy feature. Callum also spotted that there was a little circle came up, uh, which was the blind spot monitoring, which is another advanced feature of this car. It's just loaded with sensors and tech and basically helps to keep you on the road in the right lane, make sure that nothing is uh, gonna hit you or vice versa. <laughs> It is no slouch. Okay, I'm scaring myself a little bit how quick this is. Oh, I think this is quicker than the EV6. I'm not even, I haven't even tried the different modes yet. I wasn't even in sport. That's, that is ridiculous. That was in normal. So we left here on about 229 miles worth of charge. It's saying we have 217 still to do, but when we do eventually need to charge this car, which won't be for quite some time, this can charge faster than just about anything else on the road, owing to the fact that it has an 800 volt battery, which is about twice the voltage of most other EVs today. What does that mean? Power is current times voltage, so therefore you can get a faster charge with the same amount of current. 
How are you in? Cup of tea? Sounds like a plan. How's the tea, Ewan? Oh, it's really nice, thanks Rick. Excellent. Maybe bring some uh, butter next time? Yeah, sorry about that. Mmm, yum. Yeah, it's a bit dry, isn't it? Mmm. <laughs> oh. So, could you plug a microwave into your car as well? Yeah, I mean, it's a proper 13 amp domestic socket. It'll power anything that you can plug into your house socket. Anything? Anything. Um, dishwasher? Yeah. Um, PlayStation? Yeah. Uh, Nintendo? Anything, yeah. Um, Hair dryer? Yes, anything. Oh, brilliant. So you don't even need a house anymore, you just, just have a car. No, this, this is apocalyptic proof. You know, you can, you can basically drive it out into the wilderness, you've got your toaster, you've got your kettle sold separately, and yeah, you can plug in anything you want. You can have all your creature comforts. Happy camping. Um, okay, question, you're not plugged into your toaster, how are you powering that? Oh, there's another one of these 13 amp sockets underneath the rear seat. And have I got that in mind as well? You do indeed. They're oh. pretty much the same car, they just look a bit different. Happy days. So you can actually have, what's that now, about seven-ish kilowatts worth of devices plugged in at the same time, because there's a 13 amp socket over there, and there's a special adapter for one there. So you can have both of these plugged into the same car. So you can have your cake, and your toast, and your tea. And eat it. Really should have brought butter. So Ewan has been driving the 2022 World Car of the Year, the Hyundai Ioniq 5. What's your thoughts and should we have a look around? Absolutely, this has blown me away and I can see why it won that title. I mean, straight away, yeah, look at that design. It's absolutely gorgeous. That should be on grand designs. The kind of brushed steel effect of the paintwork is utterly unique. This whole kind of pixelated lighting that's reflected around the front as well. Absolutely beautiful car. And then in terms of boot space, although it looks the size of a Mark 1 Volkswagen Golf, it's actually a cavernous 527 litres. That's a lot of toasters you can fit in there. Goes up to nearer 1600 litres with the rear seats folded down. So you're not going to run out of space in this car, I reckon. And it's all automagical, as you can see. Yeah. Beautiful. Oh, this is one of my favourite features. Hit it, Ewan. Here we go. So here's your charging flap. So you've got uh, your standard charging plus fast charging there. If you pull it yep. out there, which CCS. means you can have super rapid charging. Between 18 and 20 inch alloys, depending on the exact spec that you go for, um, which does mean, unfortunately, the tires will probably be a bit pricey, but yeah, they look neat. So and enough. smaller tires are good because it gives you additional range. It's better for range. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's more kind of squashy tire. And as you say, particularly if you look on Tesla's website, when they spec their cars, they actually show you that the, the bigger the diameter of the alloy, the less range you'll get. So yeah, but, I mean, that said, this car still manages well in excess of 200 miles per charge on the bigger That's battery it. version. So. Huge. I like the fact that it has a frunk. Exactly. I mean, it's not the biggest front trunk or, or frunk as it's known. Fruit. But, fruit. Yeah, or fruit. The front yeah, boot. Yeah. <laughs> the front boot. Coined by Johnny Smith, I think, to give him credit. But yeah, that is it's still a useful storage place. So you can put your cables in there. Something that doesn't really, you can't really see it because of the, the light at the moment. But in pitch black, these little slits here are actually lit up. They're illuminated just now right the way along the front of the car. This moustache of light really does pop when you're driving at night. And again, look at the design of those headlights. Absolutely gorgeous. This very kind of square pixelated design that, um, that Hyundai's gone for. They've gone retro futuristic with this and it is an absolutely gorgeous car. But obviously, some people prefer a more kind of flowing contemporary look and that's where the EV6 is the exact same car with a very different looking design. Uh -huh. So this is the Kia EV6. I've been driving this today and it's a, it's a really nice car. Thoroughly enjoyable drive. What's your thoughts on, on this, this model? Well, this is basically the Ionic 5 wearing a very, very different set of clothes and therefore the tech specs are broadly the same, but the styling is completely different. Look at this flowing sculpted rear and actually just the entire 
lot of the car. It has this very modern ergonomic smooth design. Look at the, the rear light right the way along. Beautiful style with these LEDs. And then it kind of continues that swoop around there. Really, really neat flowing looking car in comparison to the kind of chonky retro uh, Ionic 5. Cavernous boot, you're not gonna run out of space there. Round the other side of that boot, you can sling an extension cable from the 13 amp socket, domestic socket, which is between the rear seats, same as in the Ionic 5. You've also got the option to do vehicle to load by plugging in the special adapter in your charging flap here. And this has got loads of room here yeah. for cables. Way more than was in the Ionic 5, which is worth noting actually. So yeah, that's your tire repair kit there, um, your emergency sort of tire gunk if you wish that you blow into it and then you've got your tire pump there too. And of course your, your cables there as well. Really handy storage there, not to be underestimated. Nice. Really should have brought butter. Ooh, yeah. And jam. Or oh, Marmite. Do you like Marmite? Mm, mm, no. Do you know what? Some people say this car is a bit like Marmite. You either love it or you hate it. Do you love it or hate it? I thought that I would be indifferent towards it. I thought it would be one of these rare ones sitting on the fence. Genuinely, this car has impressed me today. It just handles so well, and the amount of tech, which is there, I mean, the heads-up display is brilliant. You don't need to take your eyes off the road to see all the essential stuff you need. There was a bit of a split decision earlier. We had about 20 school kids come past here, and we asked them which, were their, which was their favourite and pretty much 50-50, wasn't it? Yeah, it all comes down to styling. They are the same car underneath. It's the same batteries from SK Innovation, which are a, a very good company at making batteries, by the way. This will run and run and run. It's the same motors. It's basically the same skateboard onto which a very different looking car has been placed. And it all comes down to styling at that point. It's design preference. Beautiful. Well. We're going to take it for another drive, see what it can do. We've uh, test driven it here from Glasgow. We're at Whiteley Wind Farm and uh, it's a pretty grey day. The wind is blowing, which brings us on to the point nicely about renewable energy. What we have behind us is the biggest onshore wind farm in the UK and the second biggest in Europe. This is Whiteley Wind Farm, 215 wind turbines producing 539 megawatts at peak of power, which is about a tenth of Scotland's peak demand. Tenth, wow. Don't know if you knew this, you probably do, um, but this model, not this exact model, comes with solar panels on the roof of the car, so you can even charge whilst you drive. If those panels can help to keep the auxiliary stuff, you know, your headlights, your windscreen wipers and so on, that kind of side of things, topped up as you're driving along, then yeah, that's, that's definitely admirable. Brilliant. Well, thanks, Ewan. Let's get back to uh, to Glasgow and find some some butter for this incredibly dry. Yeah. Do you know what ratio? Last to finish it. Oh, okay. Okay. I hate waste. No. Yeah. I also hate dry toast. Mmm. Welcome to the interior of the Kia EV6 and it's a car I've wanted to drive for quite a long time now. I first sat in it at Fully Charged Live last year at Farnborough International but now behind the wheel it doesn't disappoint. The EV6 feels more like a car uh, because the Ionic 5, the interior trim is, well, it's very much kind of grand designs, lounge, don't sit on the furniture sort of thing. Whereas the EV6 is obviously a much darker interior, it's more akin to a modern car these days. But uh, that said, very much a premium segment car. You look at uh, what Kia and Hyundai have been doing previously, they were mid-range car manufacturers. This is a definitive leap into premium segment with the EV6 and the Ionic 5. And when I got in, the seat did its memory function. It's, ah, Dr. McTurk, I've been expecting you thing. I'm going to quickly talk through the modes. So, number one, we're in eco at the moment, so that gets you maximum range. Or, by a click of the switch here on the steering wheel, it drops it into normal, so it gives you a little bit more oomph. And my favourite mode, sport. So, once you kick it down into this, it gets you that dynamic acceleration. Let's see what it's got. Oh! That's not bad, and it's got a very cool noise as well. There's an artificial kind of warpy noise that the, the Kia have put over 
the uh, the engine uh, or the motor, I should say. It almost sounds ooh, almost as if it's impressed by itself. So the, you know, the faster you're driving, it kind of goes ooh. Three, two, one, lift off. <laughs> I love the noise. One key difference between the EV6 and the Ionic 5 is that the Ionic 5 has a lot more tactile buttons on the dashboard. So, for example, they have one that just says nav and you can get straight into the sat nav, you know exactly where you are. Whereas there's a lot more touch screen interaction in the EV6. And actually the bar where there were the actual physical clicky buttons in the Ionic 5 is a touchpad itself now, which when you're driving from experience of the Tesla Model S with its giant touchscreen, does get a bit faffy because you need to take your eyes off the road, but it's perhaps not as bad as the Tesla that is one giant touchscreen. But one thing that's worth noting as well is again, this will charge faster than just about anything else on the market. And in fact, it will definitely max out the chargers that are being installed by the faster projects, which are going to be typically 50 kilowatt DC chargers. This car, the GT Line version of the EV6, will charge at up to 220 kilowatts, which is, as I said, only beaten by the Porsche Taycan at the moment. Oh, I'll tell you what, you could actually live in this car. You really could, couldn't you? I mean, it's it's got all the mod cons, as you can see. I mean, that's the passenger seat that's doing that all electrically. And it's got more power sockets than some student flats I've lived in and more USB sockets than some desktops I've used. It's so well spec. I love it. I love it. I, love it. I love the fact that you can have a cup of tea in the wilderness. You can have some toast. You can plug it into anything you want, pretty much. And this is essentially a and moving out a mobile home. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, this is taking the creature comforts of home out into the wilderness if you want. It's fantastic. And I can see a lot more demand for this from consumers. I can see a lot more EVs trying to emulate what Hyundai and Kia have done here. I love it. Even, the, even cameraman Ollie said, I feel like I should take my shoes off when I get into this car. <laughs> it is, yeah, it's a beautiful design on the inside, isn't it? And in fact, well, yeah, on that note, between these two, seemingly identical but actually different in their own ways cars the ionic 5 and the ev6 which do you prefer which which impressed you most that's a really tough question but i if i was if i had to choose one i would say i would take the interior of this car with the exterior of the ev6 do you know what genuinely i am exactly the same on that i do still like the styling of the ev6 on the outside but the interior of this really does pop when you sit in it in person and the performance i think just edges it with the ionic 5 as well um, the suspension is just that wee bit softer but still firm and well planted and the yeah the, the steering is wonderful the throttle response is great mm. they've, they've just managed to tune this to in my humble opinion perfection they've done a brilliant job yeah couldn't agree more um one last thing before we go um it has a last gadget which we need to check out yeah. It is summon mode. So should we take the uh, take the dogs for a walk? Yeah, let's try this. Okay. I do love driving, but if you can walk, you should walk. Having said that, we can also take the car for a walk with summon mode on this, which is amazing. So you can press hold, unlock, hold, uh, lock, lock, something like that. Press some buttons, and then you press this button, and it should, hopefully... Wake up! Oof. Hold, unlock, Lock. <laughs> it's not very fast, but if someone does walk in front of it, it does stop. So it's very useful if someone blocks you in in the car park and you can't open the doors, you just simply summon your car out. How's your dog coming? It's a very disobedient dog. Come on now. Nope, doesn't want to go. I guess the EV6 does win in the end. I'm going to take this one. Yeah, I'll see yeah, you later. Don't blame you.